The day I walked in there to apply for the job, I must have walked by the place six times. I was 15 and a half, very shy. When I went in and they got the job, I think it was the first notch in my self-confidence that helped me bring it out of it. I worked at several McDonald's. I, I worked as a 16-year-old. I had my first job at a McDonald's. And then I worked my way through college at McDonald's. And then after we were married and had our first child, I supplemented my income working at a McDonald's. If I wasn't in the entertainment field, I would definitely seek a position at McDonald's. The manager that I worked with was really nice. He was really uh, flexible for me as far as when I needed to work here. Oh, come, come in when you can. We'll arrange, you know, the schedule. I learned how to coordinate things. Um, just teamwork, you know, it was very important at McDonald's. Uh, everything was like uh, one, two, three clockwork. And uh, I learned a lot of responsibility uh, as a person and responsibility as far as coping with others. McDonald's showed me a lot of responsibility and teamwork, which is important as a firefighter and cooking hamburgers. Benefits that I derived from working at McDonald's was primarily a steady income in order to pay my bills so I could eventually become an airline pilot so I could go through flight school and college. Uh, and second, it was a uh, flexible uh, working schedule where they work their schedule around me and uh, third most it was, it was fun I still keep in touch with the, the people I worked with back then as now and we're still as good friends after working two years together. I've served in the Illinois Senate and I've served as mayor of a major city in Illinois and I now work as an officer in one of the major banks in the country and in all of those careers McDonald's experience is an important part of the fabric of my life. It taught me things that I've been able to use, and obviously working in government and politics and now in sort of a sales role, uh, it helped me learn how to identify people, see what their interest is, and try to deal with that interest. And no matter what you're going to go into, what career you're going to decide upon, the principles you learn there, you can take anywhere. And you can learn a lot by the corporation as a whole to watch how they do their day-to-day -day business and the managers will let you in on that they'll show you how they do the books they'll show you how to do inventory i was exposed to all those things so when i went into the corporate world i didn't feel like i was a stranger to it what's the uh, what's the first thing you learn in your first job what's the most important what's the most important first thing to show Again, to show up. This, see, again, this is one of the things that, that academics and the welfare state don't get. Most of what you have to learn is not pre-printed in some neat, orderly program done by a PhD. I say this even though I'm a PhD. Most of it is learned in, in, in the richness and depth of life. The number one thing about going to work is going to work. What's the number two thing about going to work? Oh, okay. huh? Going to work again. Huh? Carrying out your tasks. Carrying out your tasks because, and this is very important, if you've never, and this is one of the things we don't get, which we'll get into next week, about how do you replace the culture of poverty with the culture of productivity. First, you've got to learn. I don't feel good. Go to work. But I'm having a big fight with my girlfriend. Go to work. My boss wasn't nice to me yesterday. Go to work. The, cu the customer didn't re respect me and appreciate the way I gave them the hamburger. Go to work. Learn. Grow up. Now I'm at work. I don't feel like being at work. I want to go talk to my girlfriend who I'm fighting with. Stay at work. My older daughter went to work for Delta uh, several summers. One of the front, it was great. I watched her grow. I watched her go through this. And she had this wonderful uh, guy who probably was totally politically incorrect, uh, although he was probably saved because he was black. But he was physically huge. My daughter's not, she's about four, five, four. And, and, and he said to her the first week, you show up or I'll kill you. <laughs> this is clearly a litigatable statement. Well, Kathy, Kathy said to me, I'm convinced. I'm showing up. I'm not. <laughs> and they had a rule. Well, one of the jobs she had that summer down at the Atlanta airport was she met the five-year-old who was flying, who had to change planes. Losing the five-year-old was an automatic, farable offense. 
And it was very, but, but think about this, because it's so opposite the welfare state mentality. They had to get into this college kid's head. We're really serious about this. You can't lose a five-year-old in the middle of an airport. The child could get killed. They could get kidnapped. Bad things could happen to them. Hold their hand. Don't talk to your girlfriend. Don't think about your boyfriend. Pay attention to the little kid. Now, when you're 18, 19 years of age, or more, you're 16. You've grown up in poverty. Nobody near you has ever had a job. You don't know anybody who's been to work every day and stayed all day. There is no one in your personal experience who's done it. The first thing you've got to do is have a job. Any job beats a theoretical, academic, let me hold your hand, I hope you'll come most mornings, 70% is a passing grade. I mean, what's a passing grade at McDonald's? It's close to 100%, isn't it? You walk in, you say, I want an Egg McMuffin. Guess what you want? I mean, what's your reaction if you say, I want an Egg McMuffin, and they give you something else? It's 100% wrong, right? So anything below 100% is a failing grade. Now, they've been through the school system where if you have 65%, but your grandmother's been sick and you really got a good excuse, and, well, we'll give you a C because you don't need to feel bad. You go into the real world of real business where you're dealing with real money and real customers, it's 100%. And now, nobody's 100%, so it's 99.97. But it ain't much slack. And when you're on the customer side, you don't give any slack. Isn't that right? I mean, what's your reaction? You want your order, and then you give them cash. You want the exact change. You don't want within 5%. Hey, an A is within 5%. Why are you mad at me? <laughs> I mean, just think about it. The whole academic setting is nuts in terms of teaching people about the real world of interacting in the real marketplace. And so what happens? You create the first hamburger flipping job. The kid shows up at McDonald's. They don't start by flipping hamburgers. They start by cleaning the place up. Now you've reduced them to a janitor. How can, you have, how can you lack dignity and be out there pushing a broom? And the answer, of course, is if you're smart, because it is the first step to a career in which you'll know how to go to work, you'll know how to earn a living, you'll know how to work in a team, you'll know how to manage others, you'll know how to deal with customers, and what's the result? You have a better future. But unless you have a dynamic view in which you, you see life taking off, if you have a static view, we've now trapped this poor person and they're not going to ever have any future at all because you forced them to go to work. And that's sort of the core distinction. It's a very deep distinction. When we come back after the break, we're going to look at how does this apply to America and the world market.